Well, today's video is a test. I'm going to an EVgo DC fast charger that's about 10 miles from my house. I've seen it listed on PlugShare and have been waiting to try it out for some time now. By the way, it's the only DC fast charger that has a Tesla connector in my metro area that's not a supercharger. For this test, I'd like to have the car at a low state of charge to get an idea how long it takes to get from 5% to 80% charge. Today, I was down to 3% when I arrived at the station, about 10 miles of juice. Let's get started. I have arrived at the EVgo location and there are two large cabinets here. The one in front and one behind it. The front one is called Carry and it has CCS and CHAdeMO connectors that are both rated at 100 kilowatts. I can't use that one. The one behind it is called Herb and it also has a CCS and CHAdeMO connectors that are rated at 100 kilowatts. It was also modified to now include a Tesla connector. Note that the label here says that the Tesla handle only supports 50 kilowatts. I think that's because this is limited to the CHAdeMO to Tesla adapter built into the unit. This is the PlugShare app and it shows the location for this EVgo site and info about it. PlugShare is a handy app to find charging locations and to know their status and usage history. Bringing up the EVgo app now. Yesterday I created a login for EVgo since I've never used their charging before. Also in the app, I added my credit card information so that I can use the app to start and pay for charging. EVgo has pricing plans if you are a frequent user. For example, this shows $7 and $5 subscriptions. The biggest advantage is that there are no session fees. Since I'm using this under standard pricing, there is a 99 cent fee for the charging session. Then it will cost 30 cents per minute of charging at this location. One issue with a lot of DC fast chargers is the LCD display screens tend to get wonky when exposed to elements continuously. However, this one works just fine, if a bit dim, and the touchscreen is functioning too. This unit also takes credit cards directly, so you don't have to have an app or account and it will still work. That's a nice touch for other networks that don't always use this. I parked my car straight into the right parking spot. Taking the Tesla connector and cord out from the stall, I tried to reach my car, but it is much too short. Even if I pulled my car all the way forward, it would not reach. Luckily, no one is in the other parking spot, so I moved the car and backed it into the left spot. I did that since my charge port is on the rear and the charging station is also in the rear of the spot. And yes, now it can reach the car's charging port. I have the EVgo app ready with the charger Herb on the bottom of the screen. When ready, Press the Tesla icon on the bottom right to go to the next step. Well, let's get started. I take the cord out of the holster on Herb and pull it around the back of the charging station. Then I plug it into the car's charging port. I press the start charging button on the app. It now says it is talking with the car. Make sure that the connector is plugged in, which it is, as you can see here. The app gives about two minutes to plug in the charge cord after starting. I get a screen on the app that shows the vehicle charging. Things look like they're beginning to work. A notification states vehicle is now charging. And a split second later, it then says charging session has ended. But then a screen pops up saying, thank you for visiting. What? Something is wrong. Let me try it again. First, I remove the charging cord. Well, maybe it was the order of the plugging in. So I start again by pressing the start charge and then insert the charge handle into the port. And it looks like it's doing the same thing again. I notice that the Tesla lights go from blinking blue to blinking green, and that's usually a good sign. 
But after a minute or so, the Tesla logo just disappears completely. However, there seems to be a problem. I look at the car's screen and it shows that there's an error that the car cannot charge. Then it says charging adapter fault. Charging equipment communication lost. I press the error on the screen and a list of alerts shows up on the right side. Well, this isn't good, so I decided to call customer support, which has a phone number listed on the app. I didn't record the conversation for obvious privacy reasons. After a few seconds, I was connected to the customer support representative who got my email address and the charging station ID number. She then proceeded to manually start the charge process again for me. I pressed some buttons on the LCD screen and then inserted the cord into the car. It seemed to do the same thing as before. She then had the charging station do a full reboot and see if that was the issue. I started the charging process one more time, but it also failed. At this point, the customer rep admitted that the Tesla charging was not operational at this time and that she scheduled the station to receive a service visit to correct the problem. It's hard to say if it is a hardware problem with the Tesla cord or the internal Chatamo adapter or something with the charging unit itself. Looking back at the history of check-ins for this location, many people have had no problem using the CCS or Chatamo ports for charging. The only two negative reviews I saw mentioning Tesla, one was about five weeks ago. It mentioned that the Tesla charging was working but stopped prematurely due to the handle becoming very hot. So my guess is that the handle or cord is somehow damaged and needs to be replaced. This has been an issue for five weeks and so far no service has been done. Hopefully my call today will get the service it needs. What do I do now? Well, I only have 3% or 9 miles of charge left. I would probably be in trouble if an alternate charging station is not within 10 miles of me. I did have to charge for 25 minutes at a destination charger a couple miles away from the EVgo. I charged up from 7 miles to 20 miles. Luckily, only 9 miles away is a brand new V3 Tesla supercharger location with 12 stalls. Pulling in with 11 miles or 4% left, I proceeded to the far right side of the line of chargers. I backed in and did the normal supercharger process of opening the port and inserting the supercharger cable. One thing that Tesla does very well is the supercharger network and the ease of charging at individual stalls. The car automatically connects and charges my credit card that's on file with my account. I charged up to 40% in about 11 minutes, and that's enough for me to get to work today and back home with plenty of charge remaining. So in conclusion, my test of the EVgo DC fast charger for the Tesla connector was a failure, but I do want to return to this location in the future to see it repaired. The 50 kilowatt max rate is pretty slow compared to 250 kilowatts on the V3 supercharger, but I'm still interested to see the charge curve up to 80%. More locations like this will be good to fill in gaps where the superchargers are not located. Even at 50 kilowatts, it's significantly five times faster than using a Tesla destination charger, which is level 2, 208 to 240 volt at 10 kilowatts. Well, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.